Okay, we're live. I apologize for the delay, but I had to update a browser and it worked last two weeks ago, but it did not work today. So welcome to Wine Wednesday, the first of many, hopefully. Um, we'll all be going over a new bottle of wine we'll be featuring um, each week, um, talking about where the wine is grown, um, the, the grapes, the components, all that stuff. So you can kind of get a better understanding and a better depth of knowledge um, of wine if it's something you want to learn more about because wine pairs wonderfully with food. So this week we'll be diving in. Um, I'm corking this bottle of Sor Sorae wine um, and it is from the region of Veneto in northern Italy. So if you know Venice, um, very popular tourist destination. Similar area, Venice is actually within Veneto. Um, but this particular bottle of wine um, is actually from the region of Verona um, in that city, also well known for the um, setting of Romeo and Juliet. So again, but this is the region, not specifically the city because it's kind of... Um, but all over there. Uh, so this wine in particular is actually a red blend. Um, it is designated as an IGT wine. Um, Italian wines um, fall under different sorts of classifications. You have your DOCs, your DOCGs, and um, also your IGTs, um, which kind of fall below that. Um, they're not as heavily regulated, but they indicate a specific region of production um, similar to those, um, but just don't have as many regulations. Um, so this one specifically is a 2016 vintage, um, and it is 14% alcohol. I always like to touch on that because that kind of uh, gives you an idea of not only how it will affect you, um, but kind of like the dryness of the wine. Um, sweeter wines typically have a lower alcohol content, not that kind of thing. Um, this one um, is grown in, like I said, Verona region. Um, very mountainous, um, hillsides, um, that's just that area, for example, specifically on this bottle. Um, it's The vineyards are on the top of the hills is what, is what they're um, saying here. Now, this wine is made with the Apacimento method of winemaking. Um, you will also find that in Amarone wines, Amarone de Vallapicella, um, and Vallapicella region wines. Um, Amarone de Vallapicella being one of those like hired some specifically either DOC or DOCG. I have to double check on that. Um, but I really, really do love those Amarones and Amarone de Vallapicella. So if you like those, if you've had them before, you will likely like this bottle as well. Uh, the blend um, components of this wine are going to be 40% Merlot grapes, 30% Corvina, which is a very um, typical grape of the Verona region. Um, it's actually, from what I've learned in the past, the most important grape variety of Verona region. And it's very common also in Valpolicella um, wines. Audra, sorry, I left me. So, okay, I don't know, something's going on with my um, whole situation over here, but we're just going to power through it, and it's going to be posted for a later viewing. Um, so the um, other components would be 20% Cabernet grapes and 10% uh, Crotina grapes, which are also found in other regions of Italy um, as well. So uh, a little bit about the Apacimento method that I briefly touched on just a moment ago is that it constitutes drying the grapes partially prior to pressing the grapes. Um, and what that does is that concentrates the sugars um, and the flavors in the wine. So it really lends itself to like a really um, wonderful, wonderful tasting wine. Um, this one in particular, um, I have never had before. I got it at Trader Joe's. I really like Trader Joe's. They have really great price ones. They have a really pretty good wine selection for the size of the store and they do have Italian wines. They have um, French wines and I personally am obsessed with Italy and I love all Italian wines. I love how they regulate things and how like they take such pride in what their products like stand for and the Kind of regulations behind it because there are certain things that like they they mandate must be in the wine or where it's grown so it really produces like a really unique um, product 
So um, when, when tasting wines, right, you want to look at the color of the wine. You want to look at the nose or you want to sniff the nose, which is the smell of the wine. And then the taste, obviously, being the whole reason that we would be here trying the wines. So this wine, particularly the color, um, I would classify personally falls in kind of like a garnet shade. Um, it's not really like super like on the purple raspberry end, um, but it's not quite a brick red either. Um, so it's kind of like in the middle, nice garnet hue. Um, it does have some clarity, um, but it is also very much like opaque solid unless you shine some light through it. Um, as far as cheers, Kathy, cheers, cheers. Um, so I made some notes on this. I let it breathe a little bit. I opened it about two hours ago, tried the wine, and I really do think this one particularly, letting it open up, breathe, you get a little bit more of the fruity essence to it, um, which I really enjoy with wines. Um, this one, what when I first opened, has had a little bit more of like a spicy, earthy scent. Now the fruit is coming forward a little bit more. And it's really good. It has it's, It is tannic. You get the acidity um, in your mouth and in the side of your you know, tongue with your taste buds. But this particular wine, it's okay, Kathy, don't worry about it. <laughs> this particular wine um, does pair well with red meats, with lamb, with, um, I think you would like it too. It, it's really good, with, especially with food. I even had it um, with brie and a rosemary cracker earlier, and it was like really, really delicious. Um, and then it's warm, so you like feel it in the chest, like it just makes you happy, you know, as wine should. Um, it has a little bit of spiciness to it, um, but it does also have the, the dried fruit component. A little bit earthy, like a little, very, very, very minor like tobacco in the, in the nose, right? But I really, I really do like this. Again, $9, $8.99, I think at Trader Joe's. And it's, it's really good to be really, really good as suggested pairs with those um, red meats. Is it kind of cherry? Mm, like a little, little bit, but it is a little bit, I would say like on the, on the drier side, um, you do have a little bit of fruitiness to it, but uh, not super, super, super sweet. Um, if you're looking for something a little more fruity, I probably would go for more of like the Amarone um, variety, uh, but again, this one, the name of it um, is uh, Soraya, which kind of, I guess, designates the, the area or the, the vineyards that they grow on. Is it heavy? No, heavy. I wouldn't say. It's not really too heavy. It's a nice, it's a nice wine, like a nice drinking wine. Um, smooth. A little bit has like a little pick up on the tongue because it is kind of have like the the tartness right um as far as the acidity but it's 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 good i would recommend trying it you don't know until you try it right ryan wine food's very personal um but it's it's a good one um is cab heavier yeah i would say because i'm not too much of a fan of like cabernets typically, except for I really do like Cabernet Franc, um, and they actually produce some of those in Italy. There's one that I really like um, that I've had at Italy in LA. Very, very good. Um, but I would say compared to that, because this one does actually have 20% Cabernet. So you do have some of that grape in um, in this wine, but it's not completely. It is, it is a blend. I would say the Cab's heavier, though. It's good. I like need to go get some takeout though. But yeah, I would pair this definitely with the meats over. You could do with a pasta that maybe has like a bolognese sauce or something like that. Any other questions? Because that about wraps it up if, we, if I don't have any more questions, but I'm here to answer them. I've been drinking, oh. Pinot, Pinot Noir. I 
That's what I think this one is like, if you like reds, you would like this. Especially if you like the Amarones. All right, so if you have any other questions, do please still comment. Um, I monitor, I'm very much like on top of things. So if you have any um, other sort of questions after you watch this at a later time, please let me know. You can also direct message us um, at Foodie Crawls and I'm here to answer any questions you have. Let me know what kind of wines maybe you wanna try. Um, if there's a wine that maybe you're like, I don't know if I'd like that, I don't wanna to commit to it, I don't wanna buy it because I don't know if I'm gonna like it. Um, that's what we're here to do, kind of like expose um, everyone to different things, new wines, new foods. And so if there's anything that you particularly wanna try, let us know, comment, message us, comment on our, anywhere on our feed. Um, and we look forward to Tom joining you next week. Uh, let me know. And then we're going to do this on a weekly basis. Wine Wednesday um, featuring a different bottle. We'll go through um, like the region, um, where it's from, what it's composed of, how it's grown, all that kind of stuff. So if you have any other questions, thank you. Thank you for loving my hair too. Um, I just got it colored. But let me, let me know because um, we're really here to kind of help you guys experience and discover new things um otherwise we'll just kind of pick another wine um for next week um that maybe you haven't heard of so it's really just about discovering brand new things but tune in next wednesday for wine wednesday same time around 6 30 p.m we'll do it on facebook and then we'll also have an instagram version as well um around 6 p.m so whatever time you can make whenever when you want to see um we are going to be doing it weekly. So thank you and good night. Cheers. Enjoy whatever you're drinking. Um, give us a try. Let us know what you think about it. If you do get it, give it a try. Um, and I'm going to finish this glass of wine. So we are, and I still am learning how to do a live, so I need to figure out how to end this. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's a big red button. All right. Good night.